Welcome back to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. And once more, we have the same team here on the mat that was with you yesterday. We have Ron Thomas to my immediate left, yes. to my immediate right. Ron is a producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network and he has decided to come and stretch with us every chance he gets. Ron, we appreciate you coming back. Yeah, Thanks. a lot of producers are scared to do yoga, I'm <laughs> gonna say. You better, you better get some courage. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. I think that's all it takes, just coming here on the mat, yeah. and then you find out it's not as bad as it looks, especially if you have amazing teachers like Amber yeah. telling you that it's okay. Listen to your body and just go as far as you want. Amber D'Amato is a musician and a yoga teacher extraordinaire in my books anyway. Amber, you're one of my three favorite teachers in Thank New York. You. I love the way you teach. And it's really lovely too, the way you explain things to us. And we're really looking forward to today's episode as well. Today, we're hoping you, you taught us how to stretch safely in chairs. We, we adapted some of the standing postures as well, using them in front of us. What do you have in store for us today? Um, well, if it's okay with you, I'd love to show some beginner variations of Downward Facing Dog, which is a classic pose, okay. but uh, a lot of people don't know how to do it properly. Right. Um, or I, I shouldn't say it like that, it's just that a lot of people struggle with the pose. So right. I would love right. to show some great variations that are okay. options for people. Downward Facing Dog is by nature more of an intermediate pose anyway. Um, but I think that with some great props, which we have, I'll be able to make it beginner friendly. Okay. And then if we have time, uh, I can show beginner versions of plank and knees, chest, and chin. Plank. I would like a beginner version <laughs> of plank. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Before Amber takes us through this little journey today, I'd like to acknowledge our crew, Josie and Hurd, in our control room is our director for today, and she's been our director for a long time, hopefully for a very long time to come as well. Carol Lewis on camera, thank you, Carol, for being there for us. And Richard Swanson is responsible for the studio lights and the sound systems, so thank you. As a team, I think we're all working well together. Thank you, we really appreciate that. Amber, whenever, oh, sorry, just one other thing. I just want our viewers to know that we air Monday through Friday, Time Warner 57, RCN 84 and Fios 35. Hello, Susan. You're welcome to stretch with us. There's a mat here. You can't get away. <laughs> That's Monday through Friday, 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. If you cannot get us on any of these channels, we're, of course, now we've started to air in the five boroughs as well. They're not the same episodes that we air here in Manhattan. When we finish airing here, we will come to you in all the other channels, so you'll see an older episode of Yoga Express probably airing in Staten Island, uh, Brooklyn, Bronx, and Queens. Manhattan gets it first because we tape these episodes at MNN, that's Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's also a place where you can watch these episodes at www.mnn.org. And if you want to reach me, you can go to the website that's on the screen. Amber, we are at your mercy. <laughs> Wonderful. At your Wonderful. disposal. We're okay. looking forward to okay, it. Okay, great. Well, the first uh, variation of Downward Facing Dog I'm going to teach you is done with blocks. So if you want, I'll show you first, and then you guys can yes. take the, okay. the other blocks. Um, I'm just going to turn my mat sure. a little bit yeah. so that people can see me we from the side. We have an amazing side. camera person. She'll pick you up anywhere. Wonderful. So to do downward facing dog for beginners, I usually recommend blocks because they make your arms feel a little longer and they're also a great way to protect the wrist. So you have something to hold on to. Whether you're using the medium or the small setting, you can really grip your fingers down, which is something that I would say if you were doing it without blocks to also do on the floor to really press the fingers down. Right. It helps to take pressure off the wrist. It also is going to help you keep your wrists parallel to the front of the mat, which is great because if the wrist is you know, doing something funny like this, right. and we have a lot of weight going into the inner wrist, and we'd rather balance the weight equally between these two bones in the wrist. Oh. So, um, so with blocks, we just take the blocks on the mat about shoulder width, and I'm gonna hold onto the blocks and come to the hands and the knees. I wanna make sure my wrist isn't hanging off the block, but it's on the block, I can hold tight. And from there, I'm gonna gently tuck my toes and lift my hips up to come into downward facing dog. 
Now for most beginners, you need to bend your knees in downward facing dog. And once you bend the knees, then your hips and your tush go up high and you can work on lengthening the spine and letting your head and your neck relax. So for a beginner, this is what downward facing dog should kind of look or feel like, that, that your knees can be bent a lot. You're right. trying to press the chest back towards the thighs. The heels do not have to be on the floor for beginners. More important is that your back is nice and long. So the blocks also help so that you don't feel like all the weight is in the hands, like right, in right. the plank. So we're gonna use our plank with our shoulders right over the wrists. I'm drawing my belly slightly and we're gonna use the plank to see how long our down dog should be. Uh -huh. So from here, without moving my hands or my feet, I'm gonna lift my hips up, bend the knees, and reach my chest towards the thighs and find my downward facing dog there. Now beginners can also practice downward facing dog at the wall. So you can stand with your, with your hands on the wall and just gently press your chest down. Right. Or you can... You um, mean like an L? Yeah, okay. just with your hands on the wall. Or beginners can also just practice from the hands and the knees, walking your knees back and just stretching the chest. Almost like a child's pose, we call it the puppy dog. Right. The tush is still up in the air. That's what you the, did yesterday. Yes. But right? the chest is melting down. Right. So that's um that's kind of my, my quick and easy beginner variation of downward facing dog is okay. done with the blocks. So you guys wanna try it? Yeah, I'd love okay. to hear it. So you take those two. blocks and you're gonna take these, Banu. Take your time. Go ahead and come to your hands and your knees, guys. And separate Oh hands. Take the blocks a little bit wider. So you mm -hmm. said about shoulder width the About block? shoulder width, yep. Okay. And then hold tightly onto the blocks, press your fingers down. <laughs> That's not gonna happen, it's too big. <laughs> That's okay. If you want, turn it uh, on the, the side. Oh, you guys okay. can both do right, that right. way. And Much you better. can take your. I think his hands are big enough to hold okay. it. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I'm, and I'm just And then when saying. you're ready, tuck your toes and lift your hips up and try the downward facing dog. So it's like an upside down V. Yep, good, and then both of you bend your knees a little bit and take your chest towards your legs. So look at your knees. Yeah, and the knees are bent and the hips are up high. How Very do you good. assess the distance between the legs and the arms? Right, good question. So bring yourself forward into the plank like you're going to oh. do a push-up. Ah, that's, that's Just shift one. forward, shoulders right okay. over the wrists. And then without moving your hands or your feet, lift your hips up, bend the knees, ah. and reach your, reach your chest back towards your legs. Great tip, okay. And come into your downward facing dog like that. Good, looks good. Just press your hand down. Yep, you got it. Excellent, and when you're ready, just come down and take a little rest. Take your knees down and have a seat. Uh. Questions? <laughs> yes, Ron. Have you ever done downward facing dog before? I've never done that before. Okay. But not with different. a brick. Awesome. You've done downward facing dog, but well, not with the bricks. Break. Yeah. Right. Does it right. feel a little bit better with the it's blocks? It's a little bit better, yeah. Great. I think holding time would be much better for us. It'll improve a lot when we use the bricks. Yeah, I think we've been doing without it, but not ha holding it yeah, for that long. Yeah, I think it's a great way to build strength in the arms, right. build strength in the center of the body, and you get tons of flexibility in the hips. You get the the hamstrings and the back of the leg right. open. You get the calf muscles really open. The tip about bending the knees just a little bit mm -hmm. that definitely helps. And you said it's okay not to have the heels all the way down. Definitely. Would it help to have maybe something wrapped? Up under the heels? Yeah, you could roll a towel and right, put it right. under the heels. Okay. Um, so but definitely, heels. you just want to eventually feel the weight equally distributed between your hands and your feet. And the legs. So you don't want to okay. feel like you're working super hard always in the arms right. or that it, all the weight's going back into the legs. You want to try to feel like you're getting 50 50, a little in the hands, okay. a little in the legs. It's very gentle on right. the body, yeah. Good. That's good. A lot of people don't say that about downward facing dog because it's a hard posture. So compared to weightlifting, though. right? <laughs> right. So this is a this is a great way to get started. If if you don't have blocks, um, you can use. Some people use dumbbells with their hands wrapped around the, the dumbbells. Oh, right, right, right. What if you have nothing? Can we just roll up the mat or something? Would that help? If you don't, you don't have, have blocks thickness, right? or you don't have dumbbells to use, you can just bend your knees a lot in oh. downward facing dogs. So, so um, I would just kind of have be here with my knees bent a lot and I would just work there. So we're still getting the benefit yeah, of Yeah, and I eventually okay. as I feel comfortable, I start to straighten out the legs, but right. there's nothing wrong with having the knees bent and just working slowly there or practicing it at the wall would be right. totally great okay. way to do it. 
Um, so the next pose is plank pose, oh. which we did just for a moment to align our downward facing dog, but it's a, it's a nice strengthening pose. So do you guys want to try it? I will. Okay, I don't good. want to, but I will because I need to improve on that. Okay, so I'm going to show you the beginner variation first, okay. and okay. then we already did the, the regular variation, but um, the beginner variation of the plank is done with one knee on the floor. Oh, okay. So um, you come to the hands and the knees, shoulders right over the wrists, and then as if I was doing the plank at any point, I'm just gonna take one leg back with the toes tucked under, oh. and I can draw my belly in by tucking the tailbone. So instead of arching my back like this, right. I'm just gonna scoop my tailbone under, so it's as if somebody was just gently drawing my back down, pull my lower belly in, and I feel my back leg working a lot here, and also my my abdomen on the so right in side. Plank, the idea is to work this muscle. The quadriceps and your and your abdominals. Abdominals. You should feel it in the obliques okay. and also in the six pack abs, right? You ready? Um, <laughs> six so, pack. So let's try. I let's look at a twelve pack. Here. <laughs> let's try the a beginner variation of the plank. Okay. We'll do one leg at a time. Okay. Okay. So come to the hands and the knees, and then take your right leg back with your toes tucked under. Drop your right hip and then draw the lower belly in like you're tucking the tailbone and ah. press your hands down. And I want you to really feel the back leg working. So if you want to come yeah, forward a little bit, Ron, so your feet, your foot's on the mat, you can walk your hands. Oh yeah, he's very tall. So yeah, that. that's good. That way you can use the sticky part of the mat to help you out. So shoot the right heel back. Yeah. Drop the right hip a little bit. Yep. And then draw the lower belly in. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you feel it? Good, relax the shoulders, keep the neck nice and long. Now take a deep breath in, and then exhale, take the right knee down, and then take your left leg back. Do you mean we were supposed to breathe? <laughs> left leg back with the toes tucked under. Do the same thing, drop the left hip and scoop the belly gently in by tucking the tailbone, and you should feel the quadriceps, your hip flexors, your lower abdominals nice and fired up. You know what I find myself doing? When I have my le left leg extended, for example, I'm putting more weight on the left hand. Is that normal? Um, it's okay if you want to take your left toes forward a little bit and really shoot your heel back, then ah, you'll get more weight in your okay. back leg. I think I, I was, what, the, what you said earlier, I think I was doing exactly that, putting more weight on the hands. Oh, that's okay. okay you should so feel it more in the center of the body now. Right, And Much let's better. take one more breath there and then I'll free you from this torture. <laughs> Good, when you're ready, slowly take your knees down, take a rest, have a seat. Wow. Um, plank pose. <laughs> you feel it, right? Feel Even it. though nobody loves the plank, it's a great <laughs> pose to do because when we strengthen the center of the body, it helps to keep all our organs uh, supported, so it keeps the organs forward and also increases circulation to the center of the body, which is great for the organs, uh, specifically your organs of digestion and your, your breathing um, right. organs. So it's, um, it is a great thing to do, even though it's not everybody's favorite pose, it's also a great way to help support your lower back. So anybody with lower back issues, um, doing the one-legged plank specifically is a great and safe way to strengthen right. the center without hurting your back. Because if you do the full one and you have lower back issues, you might sink. And right. in order to avoid that, you just take one knee down and keep that back nice and long until you feel strong enough to eventually do the plank. It really helped when with you both said legs. bring your hip forward. Mm -hmm. When you said bring the hip forward, I found myself tightening this part. Great. Because that was a conscious movement which I didn't think of before when we do it. On, we, I've never done this adaptation. We've never done it this one-legged no, adaptation, never. right? It helped because when you got into that posture and you said bring your hip, because automatically my hip went out to right. the side. So when you bring it down, then you strengthen this part. Nice Great. tip. Great. I like the plank now. Great. <laughs> one-legged um, plank. The other one I'd like to show is knees, chest, and chin. Okay. Um, knees, chest, and chin is something that I teach a lot in my vinyasa classes. Um, a lot of people practice chaturanga, which is a... Um, more of a push-up variation, but knees, chest, and chin is the beginner variation of chaturanga. It's, it gets you strong to practice the chaturanga. So I'd love to just show uh, a beginner variation of knees, chest, and chin, because sometimes 
even knees, chest, and chin is a lot to do for beginners. So, uh, so here's my here's my take on knees, chest, and chin. Um, traditionally, knees, chest, and chin is done like this: you from plank, you inhale. Exhale, knees on the floor. I'm going to stick my hips up and then put my chest and my chin down. So it's a tricep push up. Without moving my legs, I'm going to slide forward with my arms to come into baby cobra and then gently back into downward facing dog. But if that's not accessible for you, knees, chest, and chin like that, you come into plank, or maybe we're doing our one legged plank. We take the knees to the floor, and you can either do cat cow, so inhaling, looking up. Exhaling, rounding the back, and then back into downward facing dog. So inhale again, and exhale into downward facing dog. Or we can do from our plank, knees down, lean back to the forearms, and then try to take the chest and the chin down. Some people, this is as far as you go. Yeah, I think this one's going to be hard. And for that's me. <laughs> okay. So instead of just going straight down, which is a tricep uh, push up, like this. Right. Instead of doing that, we'll just slowly take our forearms down, chest and chin down, and once you kind of get to the point where you can't go anymore, you can either stay or you can just flop down. <laughs> that I could do. <laughs> and then push forward with your arms. So once you're down there, you use your arms, push, 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 and lift yourself up as high as you can without using your hands, and then come back to downward facing dog or to the hands and the Question knees. Question for the last part. Sure. When you said lift yourself without using the hands, what muscles are we using to lift ourselves up? Great question. Uh, you're using your latissimus dorsi, so the right. muscles uh, no, no, in the I, back. I, 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 yeah, the lower back. Okay. Yeah, you're <laughs> using your triceps. So when you take the elbows in and you're squeezing your arms back, okay. use your triceps. So we're opening in the chest, and then also we're using the abdominal muscles to lift us off the floor. OK. Uh -huh. So ready do you run? guys want to try knees, chest, and chin? Yes. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I won't get it perfect. Come on, Ron. You can do it. Go That's on. Okay. We're so, both going to so do it. So take your time. We're going to come to our um, one-legged plank, or oh. we can do a full, full plank with both legs back. Up to you guys, whatever you feel comfortable. Let me try that. Good. Yeah, so inhale there, and then exhale, take the knees to the floor. And then lean back, take your forearms down to the floor. And then see how you feel, see if you can put your chest and your chin down in between your hands. Yes, now push <laughs> forward with your arms, slide forward for baby cobra. That's it, that's it. Lift up as high as you can, go all the way down to the floor. <clears throat> now elbows kind of close to your body. Since we're baby cobras, this I can is, crawl. Right? This is the baby cobra, yeah. See if you can take your hands off the floor and squeeze your elbows in and lift your chest. Good. Inhale. And then exhale. You can put your hands down and come back to either the hands and the knees or into downward facing dog. Whatever Let's try the downward facing dog, Ron. Let's go all the way. Okay, feel free to use the blocks under your hands for downward facing dog if you want. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's up to you. Looks good, Ron. Yeah. You got it. He's not even using the blocks. Good. So, you guys want to do one more time? Sure. So, come forward into plank pose with your shoulders right on top of the wrists. Good, and then take the knees to the floor. You can push the blocks out of the way. And then you can either try just putting the chest and the chin down, or you can do forearms down, and then chest and chin down. Exactly. Good, and then slide forward with your arms. Lift up as high as you can. Very good. Excellent, and back in the downward facing dog. You guys are good students. <laughs> good. So there's a beginner vinyasa uh, variation. And then go ahead and take a rest. You can place your knees down and either sit or you can rest into child's pose. That would be a nice yeah. workout. If we just did that about, what, three, four times a day, yeah. that should really make yeah. us sweat right there, Definitely. right? Definitely. We have about, I think, about five minutes left. So maybe we can sneak in about two postures more. What do you think, Amber? Sure. Um, I can teach you along the lines of core strengthening. I can teach you yeah. a beginner variation of the boat pose, Navasana. Okay, core so sounds good, right? Cool. This would be done with a strap, or if you don't have a Fantastic. strap at home, you can use a towel, a hand towel. So to come into Navasana boat pose, you sit on the floor, and then you hug your knees. Oh. And for beginners, you're just gonna double your belt and take it behind the knees. Or if you 
if you want to keep it long, you can also keep it long. So you're going to slowly bring the knees up close to your chest. Good, and try to hold yourself there and oh, relax your shoulders. This is so much kinder to my body. Ah. <laughs> the other one we used to have. Good. Really so just take a deep breath there, names. and then come down and take a rest. We'll do it again. So this is a great way to do it. You want to just make sure you're not holding too much in your shoulders. So if you want, if without using the belt, you can also hold just behind the thighs okay. and practice like this. It's really, it's up to you. Yep. Good. So squeeze your thighs together, knees together, and then as you start to feel comfortable, just take one arm out. Ah, that I'm not doing. He's got it. <laughs> That's all right. And then you put it back and do the other side. Yeah, I can do this easily. Good. <laughs> and then yeah, go ahead and take background. a little break. Yeah. Rest it's okay. For a you second. can go in front of the monitor. That's fine. You guys can rest for a second. You're holding <laughs> both pose all day. You're pros. <laughs> and then uh, we'll do one more time. Um, this time, if you wanted to practice, you can also use the belt around your we feet. We have about two minutes left. Okay. We'll wrap up in sure. two minutes. Okay, so the last variation would be to just have the belt around the feet. 